Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Annalisa and this is going to be the book dating history tag. I heard about this tag from Opalescent and it was created by Chastity G and I'll be linking both of their videos below. Chastity came up with it because she was thinking about Valentine's Day and her actual dating history and that got her to thinking about her bookish dating history. So there's a bunch of bookish questions related to dating. So number one, first loves. What book was your first love? That would be Miss Fanny's Hat, which I read when I was a pretty small kid. Um, it's a children's book and it's got really cool illustrations including a lot of beautiful hats. And I absolutely love this story as a kid. I can't even <laughs> get both my face and the cover in because it's a big, big flat cardboard book. I love the illustrations and I also love all the stories because it's about this old lady remembering all the stories related to all her hats when she decides which one she's going to give to the church for a rummage sale thing they're doing to raise money um, to replace the roof. And it's just so adorable and my favorite type of roses is based on the roses that are at the end of this book because they're so pretty. Then not your type. What is your favorite genre and what book do you really like outside of that genre? Um, and so my favorite genre is fantasy, but I have a lot of <laughs> genres that I enjoy a lot um, and that I read quite a lot of. So I decided to go for one that's even outside of those and that is like historical fiction based on a real person. And I've read two of those and really like them even though I uh, I would not have said that that's a genre that I enjoy. And those are Grania by Morgan Llewellyn and um, Tubman's Command, and I don't remember the author of that one. But those are about Grania, a lady pirate um, from Ireland, and Tubman, who was a big part of the Underground Railroad and also was key in winning the Civil War. And they were both written in such a way that it was very immersive and it didn't feel like a history book but it was really cool that it was all true, mostly. Um, there were like details filled in, but it was heavily based in fact, both of them. And then catfishing, what book catfished you and was it in a good way or a bad way? Um, and A Curse So Dark and Lonely catfished me because it is supposed to be a Beauty and the Beast retelling and it has some of those elements, but none of them are my favorite elements. Like it has a, you have to be loved by someone to get this curse broken, but it's not an ugliness curse, which is one of the things that I really like. And there was also no big library <laughs> involved, which is the second thing that I really like about Beauty and the Beast retellings. And a lot of people who do like Beauty and the Beast retellings still do like this, but they like the other elements that aren't my personal favorites. Number four, does size really matter? What matters to you more, the length of a book or the ocean of emotion? And I get intimidated by super huge books, but sometimes I enjoy those the most. And sometimes I'm like, this could have been cut to like half as long as it is. Um, and sometimes really short books are totally not my thing because they don't give me enough time, but sometimes they're done really well. So it really doesn't matter to me. It's about what's packed into those pages. Number five, out of your league. Name a book that is way out of your league, but you went for anyway. Um, and for this, I was thinking about going for a nonfiction that was really heavy and that might be out of my league of understanding, but I usually am really picky about those. Um, so I decided to go with one that I was very nervous about but thought would be worth it. And that was An Unkindness of Ghosts by River Solomon. Because I knew this had a lot of sad stuff in it and stuff about slavery and um, other things that are really uncomfortable for me to read about. but. Then I heard that it had autism representation and I was like, it's scary, but I will try it. And it was very heavy. It had a lot of those things that are unpleasant for me to read. So I had to read it really slowly and have my guard up a lot, but it was worth it in the end. It had a really good representation and was really interesting and looked at a lot of topics like um, gender in ways that I hadn't seen none before. Kiss, Mary, Kill, name three books that you would kiss, marry, and kill. And I decided to bring my aceness into this again because I can, even though it's not uh, really pertinent. But I really am grossed out by wet kisses and mouth kisses. But I do totally feel the need to dry kiss things that I love, like cats. <laughs> um, give them a little kiss on the head, even if they don't like it, which they usually <laughs> don't. Which is strange, considering they like to lick me. Why do they think it's okay for them to lick me, but I can't kiss them on the head? Rude. But anyway, I would give a little, a little kiss on the head, because I love it so much, to Elatsoe, which is a 
YA aged character in a middle grade written story and it's got ace rep and it's got really cool mythology with vampires and I think some werewolves um, though they're not very involved and uh, lots and lots of ghosts and this girl being a ghost raiser who has a pet dog who is a ghost and I just love it a whole lot and it's wonderful and also very pretty. I would marry the Fairyland series because I was thinking about if you marry a book series that would probably be you would probably want to live in that world, right? And I figured, although I adore the Del Toro series, I wouldn't want to live there because it is not very disabled friendly. You have to run and jump and walk for days and days and do lots of physical things that are not, <laughs> I wouldn't mix well with. Um, but in the Fairyland series, I think that because of its wacky magic system where it's kind of different for everybody, I think I would find like a little niche where I could do useful things and uh, it wouldn't matter that I get tired really easily. Plus I love the prose and the story and just everything about it. And then kill, I would kill uh, Magpie Murders because that's a book I read really recently and hated a whole lot. Basically because of really negative autism coding. Number seven, the X you just can't let go of. What book do you keep going back to? Um, and for that I picked The Kiss Quotient. The Kiss Quotient because I read it as a comfort read quite a bit. Um, even sometimes when I should be reading other books that are on my TBR, but uh, it just makes me really, really happy. <laughs> Once again, autism representation that's done really well, and it's really, really sweet romance. And romances are really relaxing for me, usually because there's not a lot of world building and plot to digest. It's just a relationship, and that's like my favorite part of a lot of books, and certainly the most relaxing part of a lot of books for me. The Bad Boy slash Girl. Name a book that is the bad boy or girl on your bookshelf. And Chastity used this to talk about a book that was over-the-top sexual for her taste and for me uh, that book is A Court of Frost and Starlight which the books in the series previous to that had a lot of sex in them but this one went above and beyond in my opinion like it's a wonderful happy Christmassy type story with everybody giving each other Christmas gifts and stuff and snowball fights and stuff and then suddenly there's this sex scene that is like on the level of graphicness and badly writtenness it's between the rest of her books and Fifty Shades of Grey which I haven't read but I've heard and read excerpts of and is really badly written and overly graphic and uh usually Sarah J Mass isn't quite that bad but she she went in that direction in that book but I keep it proudly displayed on my shelf because it's a happy Christmas story and it matches the rest of the series really well. Number nine, Friend Zone. Name a book that you know will be a good read but you're kind of into this other book for now and you're going to put that one on the shelf for later. And that one is Enchanted Sonata for right now because I really want to read it. I know I'm going to like it a lot. It was recommended by Kara and I almost always, hi Arwen, really love her recommendations. Thank you for your help, Arwen. Please don't knock anything off, but it had to go back to the library because I wasn't able to prioritize it, so I will have to re-request it and get it back again. What are you doing? And then let's get nosy, tag three or more people and let them spill the tea. It, that is their book dating history. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tag um, the people who made and did this other tag that I'm going to film soon in to do this tag and then I'm gonna tag the people who made this tag to do that tag. So I tag Olivia's Catastrophe and What Victoria Read to do the book dating history tag and I'd also like to see Reads with Rachel's answers to this tag. Anybody else who wants to do it I would love to see those and if you want to leave an emoji rather than any words comment how about one of those um, little couple or family emojis of any mix and match pairing or grouping of people. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!